You got a problem? Well, I don't have a problem. Yes, I do. Uncle Isaac, I've been thinking. The Winthrop Academy might not be the place for me. So you're gonna quit and do what? Maybe I'll be a player. Keyboards. <laughs> Are you surprised? You serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Then I'm surprised. <laughs> Are you saying I'm not good enough to be a player? That's what I'm saying. I don't know, Isaac. Damn it, boy. You've been teaching since the day you started speaking. I should know I raised you. You taught me how to read when you was nine. You forget that? Now get your tail back to that school. But Isaac, I just feel I, I don't belong there. You ever been someplace that you feel you don't belong? Almost everywhere. So what do you do? I say I'm Jamaican. <laughs> I feel that I should be with my own people. Oh, you mean your friends at the city school, the ones that fired you behind? Hey, I was furloughed. The city was broke. Well, Winthrop Academy ain't never going broke. Teach, you remember you was out of work eight months before the job at Winthrop came along? I know, but the headmaster won't let me teach the way I want to. You still sign your paychecks? <laughs> So, if you're playing a gig and the club owner says, Isaac, this is the way I want you to play these tunes. I say, any particular key you'd like me to play them in, sir? <laughs> but that's such a compromise. Hell yes. But little by little, I slip in a note here. Slide one in there. Bend one over here. And sooner or later, I'm playing what I want to. I was right. You ain't so good. <laughs> now you come over and see if you can follow this. I've got some facts, oh, I've got some knowledge But after all those years in school When it comes to love, I'm still a fool Teach me, once before you go Teach me, why I want you so Teach me, how to make love go Mr. Gibson? Yes. Here's my extra credit project. Oh. What is it? It's an opera, sir. Those are the lyrics. The music should be ready by Wednesday. I'm sorry, Mr. Peterman. If you can't write an opera in a week and in Italian, it's just <laughs> not worth my attention. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> What's with the uh, flamenco routine? Finger snapping is just a much more sophisticated way of showing approval, don't you think? No. Well, you have to admit, sir, that the zero pins do give us a certain je ne sais quoi. <laughs> right. What does je ne sais quoi mean? I don't know. Me either. No. I don't know. Me either. So, the uh, snapping, the arrows, what's going on? Sir, <clears throat> we're quivering. <laughs> we'll go see the nurse. <laughs> Sir, if I may, quivering is a juvenile yet archaic tradition started by an immature secret society at Winthrop known as the Quiver, which, as we all know, is just an arrow holder. They wear these tacky arrow pins to show they're being considered for membership. They snap their fingers to show approval, and they perform stupid initiation deeds in hopes of being selected. Let me guess, Mr. Peterman, you weren't asked to quiver? And I, not interested. <laughs> right, Peterman. Like you wouldn't want to be a quiff? I don't have a fragile ego that needs constant reinforcement from my peers, Friedman. I was raised well. <laughs> so, what does the quiver do? Oh, really great stuff. Really, really amazing stuff. Yep. Just wild stuff. <laughs> well, I'm curious. What wild, really amazing, great stuff do you do? Well, it's a secret, Mr. Gibson. Actually, we don't know anything about the quiver until we're accepted. Accepted? Yeah. Well, don't they accept everyone? Oh. Amusing once again, sir. <laughs> OK, if, if they don't accept everyone, then how do you guys know you'll get in? He's on a roll. Oh. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, enough with the fingers. Come on, sir. We'll get in. We're a package deal. That's right. All we have to do is complete the initiation. Which is where you come in, sir. We need to be punished, sir. Oh, it's that kind of club. <laughs> no, no. Our, our assignment from the quiz is to steal the headmaster's gavel. <laughs> you never heard me say that. So, we need a good way to get into Linton's office. Go north past the trophy case. When you get to the water fountain, hang a right. Good luck. What are we gonna do now? Well, we can break into Lynn's office. Now, that's too risky. Could go out and buy an identical gavel. No, nope, don't know it's fake. Come on, guys, let's think. We need something simple. I have an idea. We build an identical office. <laughs> Why? Because Lytton won't be in there. Is there anything I can help you boys with? Uh, us <laughs> help? <laughs> you know, when I was a student at the Greenview School, I was a member of something called the 3 a.m. club. The sister club of the quiver? That's right. And as a lifetime member of the 3 a.m. club, I am sworn to help any quivs or any potential quivs. So, <laughs> is there anything I can help you boys with? We need to steal Litton's gavel, and we need a way to get into his office. Check. You're not supposed to tell people. I know. But she asks so nicely. No problem, guys. I'll tell you what. We'll make up a minor infraction to get you in, and then I'll leave it to you to get the gavel. Okay? Thanks, yeah. Miss Lee. It's my duty. If a quiff needs me, I must help him. I'm not allowed to say no to anything. Uh, Miss Lee? Except that. <laughs> Those quivs, they sure know how to have a good time. <laughs> I'm so glad that this is the last night before initiation, because I don't know how much more of this humiliation I can stand. Mm. Well, uh, in that case, probably isn't the time to tell you, but you have a run. <laughs> Mr. Gibson, I know this looks bad. Oh, actually, no. Uh, pink is your color. <laughs> really? You think so? Because... <laughs> so, uh, what's the special occasion? Or should I put you in touch with the uh, school social worker? It's part of the quiver hazing process, sir. The annual Miss Winthrop contest. <laughs> uh, Dupchek even shaved his legs. <laughs> Paid off, too. I was voted Miss Congeniality. <laughs> Guys, it's almost midnight. 
Yes, your prince should be here soon. <laughs> no, no, midnight's when the messenger arrives with our golden quivers. The highest ticket to Winthrop greatness. This is it. <laughs> the quiver calls. That's strange. <laughs> thought there'd be four boxes. I also thought there'd be four quivers. I can't believe they only want one of us. Which one? I can't look. It's on the back. Mm. Would you? <laughs> Sir, it's got your name on it. Nice! You slut! <laughs> Come on. So you didn't get in. No big deal. It's just a club. No, it's not. It's the club on campus. Not getting in is like, is like being told your existence is meaningless. Again and again. <laughs> Askew, I can't believe that you would join without us. Hey, four generations of Askew men have been in the quiver. I mean, I have a birthright to uphold here. Well, if I was the only one who got in, I wouldn't join without you guys. I'm with Tell you there. Check. I'd say any club that isn't good enough for them isn't good enough for me. Yeah, now you're talking. You. This is why I was voted Miss Congeniality. <laughs> so what are you saying? That Askew shouldn't join the quiver? Yeah, yeah in that's a what we're saying. Uh, hold on here. I understand you guys are upset. But look, you're not being fair. I mean, you guys have other people you can hang out with. Yeah, that's right. Like, dude, I mean, you've got all your jock friends we don't know. Or want to know. And Kenny, I mean, you put all your girlfriends together. We wouldn't see you for a year. <laughs> and Albie, well, you have... You have your allergies. <laughs> and I have the quiver. No big deal, right? Yeah, okay, you have a point. But there's still a difference, Askew. They rejected us. So that doesn't mean that I will. I mean, give me a little credit, girls, will you? <laughs> okay, now, that was from Vivaldi's The Four Seasons. Four, ten points, and a chance at the lightning round. Uh, who can tell me which of the four seasons we just heard? <laughs> Mr. Peter. The season just played, and quite competently, I might add, was Autumn. Correct. Thank you. Now, a 1983 recording by the Budapest Strings under the direction of Yerzy Lemke. Yeah, good old Lemke. Thank you, Mr. Peter. You know, Peter. there's an amusing anecdote about the young Lemke and the Crown Prince Victor of Estonia. Peterman? He... Nobody cares. <laughs> So, anyone hungry? Yeah, come on, guys, I'm buying. Ask you, it's free. That's why I'm buying. <laughs> Whoop! Live alert. Hey, Hardwick, what's going on? Come on, Ask you, quiver up later. Mr. Ask you, I'm glad I caught you. You are joining us for lunch. I am? Yes, you are. The quivs dine en masse. Table one. You know, table with all the mayonnaise. <laughs> Ask you, you're eating with us, aren't you? Uh, I think not. Ask you? Uh, well, why don't we all eat together, huh? I mean, Hardwick, you remember Dubchek, Friedman, and Nichols? I was Miss Congeniality. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. You were the one who actually shaved his legs. <laughs> Ask you. Now, you know that these, uh, gentlemen can't eat with the quibs. Now, if you have to share, why be a quib? Ask you? You gonna eat with us or not? Oh, well, um, maybe I'm not. But I'll see you guys back at the room, okay?
Gentlemen. Whoa. You look like you just came from dinner at Jerzy Lemke's house. It's Askew. He's a total jerk now that he's a quiver. He was always a total jerk. No, he wasn't. Oh, are you defending Askew, Mr. Dubchek? Defend him, I must. Askew's our friend. And I think that before we write him off completely, let us examine the nature of his crime. Now, he was accepted into the quiver. We were not. Is that his fault? I think not. <laughs> Are we jealous? Most certainly. Is that his fault? I think not. Now, what has Askew done, really? Abandon us for a bunch of shallow, pretentious guys he barely even knows? Is that his fault? I'm not going to answer that one. I have saddened myself. Men overboard. I don't know. Made a lot of sense to me. I know what you're going to say, sir. Oh, yeah? What am I gonna say? You're gonna say that we're jealous and that if we really wanted to be in a club, we might as well start our own, right? Lucky guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we should form our own club. Make yourselves the presidents. Make your club operate any way you want to. Accept whoever you want. Reject whoever we want. There you go, you make your own rules. You can see how the quibs feel every day of their lives. Yeah, yeah, there are two kinds of people in this world, rejectors and rejectees. Now I'll know what it's like to be the other guy. All right, first club decision, no ask you. Absolutely. Oh, and no Peterman. All right, no ask you, no Peterman. Now, who else can't be in? Let's pin it down right now so you guys can get this club off the ground. No guys who had acne before age 12. <laughs> okay, no one who wears tube socks. Oh, really, I hate that. Oh, and no one with really huge earlobes. Very repulsive. Uh, what about people who raise goats? Yes, snow goat people. All right, and uh, people who make those little balloon animals. Very, very spooky. Oh, 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 what about people named Dave, huh? Oh, and people who talk too much, and people who don't talk enough. Oh, and people that eat with their mouths open. Oh, I hate that. Oh, and people who, who like red snapper. Oh, and people who don't see the world exactly the way you two do. I say kick him out. Shut him out. Yo, Mr. fight Gibson. the power. Mr. Fight the Mr. power. Mr. Gibson. <laughs> Mr. Gibson. What, Mr. Freeman? We get the point. You do? Yeah. Maybe we're not club guys. Hmm. And maybe Askew is. And maybe. Our feelings have been hurt. Well, I understand. And the truth is, Askew said he wasn't going to change. And he has. Let's change him back. Sir, do you know any goat people? Yeah, one guy named Billy. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, let's step lively. Remember, the items with the blue tags go in the closet and the red tags go on the shelves. Hello, Adrian. Oh, hello, George. Here, just in time to help. Take these down the hall to my room. Okay. Why am I taking my clothes to your room? Because you're moving in with me. Why am I moving in with you? I didn't request a room change. I know you didn't request a room change, George. Ask you did. Ask you? Boyd, ask you? My roommate? Former roommate. And since I'm the only student at Winthrop without a roommate, I can't imagine why, <laughs> you'll be moving in with me. I look forward to the challenge. As do I. I'll see you at home. <laughs> Ask you. What's going on? Oh, um, we got a notice from the student housing board. One of us has to move. So, uh, I flipped a coin and you lost. Was I heads or tails? Tails. No wonder. <laughs> I guess this is goodbye. No, Dube. I mean, this isn't goodbye. You'll be right down the hall. I'll be living with Peterman. I'll write. <laughs> Dube? I've been lying. I know. Well, how come you didn't say anything? Because I didn't know what about. <laughs> it's the quiver. They sent me a letter. They want me to room with another member. I mean, what could I do? You could say no. You could stand up for yourself. 
You could put our friendship above your membership in the quiver. Wow. Make it sound so simple. I make everything sound simple. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't understand it. I'm sorry. No, you're not. Ask you. I am your friend. And I know in my heart there must be a reason for this loathsome insensitivity you've been displaying towards me. Is there? No. <laughs> then I was wrong. <laughs> Have my mail forwarded to me at my new address with Mr. Adrian Peterman. Ask you! Do! Wow. Well, hello, Mr. Gibson. Is some of Duke check stuff missing, or do you have a really bad moth problem? <laughs> uh, Duke check's moving out, sir. Wouldn't have anything to do with the quiver, would it? Yep. They want me to room with another member, sir. It's all in this note. So, you kicked Duke check out? I was just trying to be a good club member, sir. Do you do everything the quiver tells you to do? Sir, look, I know what you're gonna say. Why does everybody around here think they know what I'm gonna say before I say it? <laughs> You're gonna say that I've changed and that my membership in the Quiver has become more important than my friends. Another lucky guess. <laughs> Bet you don't know what I'm gonna do. You're gonna tell me a story. No. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that I wrote this letter, not your pals from the Quiver. You mean, you made me throw do check out? I didn't make you do anything. I just wanted to see how far the quiver could push you, and it looks like they pushed you pretty far. Sir, you manipulated me. Yeah, and I had a fun time doing it. <laughs> so, uh, what do I say next? That I've been selfish and blind, that I have a lot of growing up to do, and that all clubs turn you into something you're not. No. I was gonna say this club turned you into something that you're not. So I don't have to throw Duke check out? <laughs> At this point, you gotta find a way to get him back. Think he'll take a check? <laughs> you sentimental fool. <laughs> Such as the electric guitar. All right, now tomorrow we will talk performance, and I will show you how to set fire to and destroy this instrument. Excuse us, ask you. Look, I'd like to have lunch with you guys. We'd love to ask you, we really would, but our table's full. Hey, come on, the man is apologizing. Think that comes easy for him? Think that runs in his family? Has he done anything to show his remorse? Actually, he has. Mr. Peterman, why don't you tell them? I'd rather not, sir. It's too painful. Come on, Peterman, help me out here. Well, yesterday for a brief and shining moment, I had a roommate. But today, George, Mr. Askew moved your belongings back from whence they came. Whence did you move them? <laughs> This morning when you were at breakfast. I've missed you, and I've realized what a fool I've been. Wow. What? I just had a flash that one day I'll be saying those very same words to my second wife. <laughs> Ask you! Oh, I'm glad you're back. So am I. All right, let's go eat. All right. <laughs> Mr. Askew, quivs are prompt. We do not enjoy waiting. Now let's go. We have some quipper business to discuss at lunch. Well, I hope it's nothing confidential because I'm bringing some guests today. <laughs> Ask you, how many times am I going to have to explain this? The table is full. Oh, well, I guess I'll have to eat somewhere else. <laughs> you eat someplace else today, you eat someplace else forever. Well, then forever it is. On second thought, maybe I better keep this. I might need it. You see, we're starting a new club called The Quiver. <laughs> That's cute, fellas, but it's our name. It's been our name for 103 years. And unfortunately, in those 103 years, nobody thought to trademark it, so I did. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I bought the name, 
Well, the merchandising rights and the board game will be out next week. Pick one up. <laughs> can't do that. Your father was a quiv, and I can't wait till he hears about this. Oh, but he already has. See, he suggested I buy the name. <laughs> See, he was as miserable as I was in the quiver. So was his dad and his dad. No, I can't. I will not believe this. This, this is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> of course. If you're interested in buying the name back, I'm always interested in talking figures, big ones. <laughs> Let me give you my card. Oops, look out. <laughs> Ask you, you're God. <laughs> so, gentlemen, what do you say, huh? Luncheon? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, later, Mr. Gibson. That was great, huh? That's all right. Not hungry anyway. <laughs> I had an enormous breakfast. Besides, I got plenty of people I can eat lunch with. Shoot. People knocking at my door all the time, turning down invitations right and left. I got a secretary screening my calls. Dad, is Teach there? No, he ain't in. See? <laughs> plenty of people. Shoot. <laughs> Why? Because I like to eat alone. I love the solitude. Mr. Gibson? Oh, let's eat, man. I thought you'd never ask. Okay. Yeah. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs>